Hello, I'm Phil Ernest, and this is Omaha Beach in France. In this video, I'll pay homage to the more than 34,000 brave American troops that landed on Omaha Beach on June 6, 1944. It was the largest of all the D-Day landing zones. The main objective of troops landing at Omaha Beach was to establish a five mile deep beachhead that stretched from Veer River in the west to Port and Besson in the east. At these points, they would then link up with the other American troops at Utah Beach and the British troops at Gold Beach. Of all the D-Day beaches, Omaha Beach saw the greatest loss of life with more than 2,000 troops killed, wounded, or missing. Omaha Beach Memorials. Smack in the center of Omaha Beach Landing Zone, you'll find some beautiful memorials to those who fought here on D-Day. The largest of the Omaha Beach Memorials goes by the name of Les Braves. An artist named Anor Bannon created this memorial in 2004 and dedicated it to the Allied troops who landed on Omaha Beach. Les Braves consists of three sections, the Wings of Hope, Rise Freedom, and the Wings of Fraternity. On June 6, 1944, these men were more than soldiers, they were our brothers. This is Signal Monument, sometimes called Liberation Monument. The country of France dedicated this imposing stone monument to the Allied forces who landed on Omaha Beach and helped liberate Europe. The artist's intent is to resemble the prow of a boat coming out of the water. It has subtle engravings on each side, one in tribute to the 1st Infantry Division and another for the 29th. Just up the road from the Les Braves and Signal Monuments, you'll find the Memorial Museum of Omaha Beach. They have dedicated this museum to the memory of the young men who died on D-Day. If you're enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you would like to receive more of this informative content, please subscribe to the channel. I post a new video every week. Just up these steps, you'll find the 2nd Infantry Division Memorial. It is dedicated to the efforts of this division during the liberation of Western Europe for those who fought and died for freedom. After its capture on D-Day, it became the first American headquarters on Omaha Beach. Check it out. This is the gun right here. This is the outside of it, how they aim this. And this is what the gun looks like from the inside of the bunker. You come in and then it looks in like this. And this is where they would shoot this gun from inside here, positioning it and moving it around. That gun in the bunker is a 50 millimeter anti-tank gun. Just a 10 minute drive away at the Overlord Museum, you can see and experience actual tanks for yourself that fought in World War II. This is the Overlord Museum in Omaha Beach, so if you're interested in doing a deeper dive into World War II, this is definitely the place to come. And the neat thing is they have some World War II tanks that were actually used in the war. Let's check them out. The first one, this is the medium tank, a Sherman Chrysler. So this one is a medium tank. And that other one over there is the destroyer, the big guy. The American tank destroyer, 1944 Fisher body. So this guy is a British self-propelled gun. Look at how it's shorter compared to the American one. So this is a 1943 25 pounder self-propelled gun Sexton. It is a British um, tank. Notice the difference in this architecture structure of this tank. This is really neat. This is the Bailey Bridge. This bridge was actually used in World War II. Look how wide it is. There's the, uh, an American tank on top of this British made bridge. And there's information all about this bridge itself. And the neat thing is they actually have pictures of this bridge when it was used in World War II. 
As you can see, there's the actual pictures of the bridge that was used in combat. So it's really neat that they were able to preserve this bridge, move it in front of the museum, so we could all appreciate it many years later. And this is the American tank. Let me show you underneath this tank how huge this is so you can get a true appreciation of this tank itself. Now that you've had a chance to see the American tanks and a British tank, I'm going to show you what the other side was using. This is an 88 millimeter gun used by the Nazis. The Germans had over 21,000 of these produced in the war. There's some pictures of this big gun being used. The purpose of this gun was to shoot down aircrafts as well as tanks. And to put this into perspective, that gun I showed you, if you remember in the bunker earlier, that was a 50 millimeter. This one is an 88 millimeter, so almost twice as big. This is an orientation table that overlooks Omaha Beach and depicts the landings at Normandy. This is the Normandy American Cemetery and Memorial. There's the reflecting pool in the foreground, the chapel is in the middle, and the tombstones are to the left and to the right of the chapel. The cemetery was dedicated in 1956. The cemetery honors American troops who died in Europe during World War II. There are 9,388 soldiers buried here, and more than 1 million people visit this cemetery each year. After taking a long walk through the cemetery, I arrive at the multi-confessional chapel in the center of the cemetery. You are looking inside the chapel. The inscription on the left side of the wall reads, Through the gate of death may they pass to their joyful resurrection. On the ceiling of this chapel, there is a spectacular mosaic that has 500,000 tiles and tells the full round story of war and peace. The inscription on the right side of the wall reads, Think not only upon their passing, remember the glory of their spirit. And finally, on the black granite altar, the inscription reads, I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. This is an up-close view of the reflecting pool as I make my way towards the memorial. And this is the memorial. Let's go check this out. This is the big memorial that's facing the uh, cemetery. The statue in the middle is called Spirit of American Youth Raising from the Waves. And to the left and to the right of the statue, perhaps my favorite part of the cemetery, is this wall here with all kinds of information. This wall here is explaining the military operations in Western Europe at the time of World War II. From June 6, 1944 to May 8, 1945, you can have a clear understanding of what really went on. And on the other big wall from the statue, you can learn about the landings on Normandy Beach and the development of the beach land. This gives you a clear understanding of why Omaha Beach was so very important in World War II. If you would like to see my other videos on Europe, please click on the link now. Thank you so much for watching. Thank <laughs> you.